excellent. Another Monday just for you. So I gotta tell Monday morning now about you. Hey guys, it's Ernesto. Welcome to another Monday critique. Today we're gonna be critiquing two images. That's right, two images. If you guys want to submit your image to be critiqued, please join our Facebook group. It's called Fine Art Photography and Modeling. In that group, I created a specific thread where you could submit your images to be critiqued. Welcome back. It's Ernesto. Well, who else would it be? I didn't go anywhere. So here I am. <laughs> So here we have the first on deck, we have Mario. Mario attended, I think about two workshops of mine. So I know Mario fairly well. And he's using in this image, a very favorite lens of mine, which is the 70 to 200. Love that lens. So in this image, that's what he is using. So kudos to you, Mario. So let's jump straight into this image. So the first thing we start with, obviously, is light. Light is very important. I love light. Without light, we can't create images. So very important. So when Mario submitted this image, he did provide some information with regards to the lighting about this image. So I don't have to guess where the light source is coming from. The light source for this particular image is coming from camera right. So let's talk about a couple of things that Mario got right in this image. Balance in the ambient light with the flash, check. Got that, wonderful job. Having depth and dimension in this image, awesome job. One of the most important things that I love, catch lights. Has wonderful catch lights in the subject's eyes. Awesome job with that. Retaining details in the shadows. Couldn't ask for anything more. Awesome job with that. Now, let's talk about one item that could have been addressed in camera, but also can be addressed in post very easily. And that's the highlight on her shirt. And if you go into, you know, any raw editing software that you use, which is Lightroom or Capture One, whatever it is, you can easily pull back the highlights a little bit and fix the highlight on the shirt. And that can easily be addressed. So that's not that big of a problem, but that's just a little bit distracting. So overall with the lighting, great job, Mario. All right, let's talk about the pose. The pose in this image is very strong. It's kind of like those Vogue poses, I guess. Um, so it's, pretty, it's a pretty strong pose. The only thing I would say with respect to the pose is the positioning of her left hand. It seems to be crushing her stomach just a little bit too much. And when you're working with hands, what you want to do is have like soft, um, soft baby hands, I guess. Yes, <laughs> I guess baby hands. <laughs> soft hands. You want soft hands, okay? So if I was going to suggest anything, and if you were going to redo this image, my one suggestion would be if she was going to put her hands on her hip, just put it gently on her hip as opposed to pushing it like how it is right now, because it's just drawing too much attention to it. So gentle hands on the hip, and you would have that nice strong pose. So. Great job there. So now let's talk about the composition in this image. So before I go into a little bit more detail about the composition, I just want to talk about Dutch angles because that's pretty much what Mario used in this shot. Let me just define what it is for you really quick. Generally, a Dutch angle is executed by rotating your camera relative to the vertical and the horizon lines in your image. So a Dutch angle is generally used to cause tension and disorientation in an image. So let me talk about how I use Dutch angles in my shots when I do use it. 
I tend to avoid vertical or horizontal lines in any of the images that I shoot if I'm gonna use a Dutch angle. The only time I include um, vertical lines or horizontal lines if I'm using the Dutch angle in my shot is if the sh those vertical lines or horizontal lines add some sort of interest to the shot. Most of the times I find that vertical or horizontal lines, it kind of confuses well, it confuses me sometimes, so I'm sure it might confuse the viewer. So I tend to not do it. So if there's no vertical or horizontal lines, as it is in Mario's image, I tend to just do it in that in that case. If it's there's no vertical lines or horizontal lines, I, I would do it. But other than that, I avoid it. So in Mario's image, he's using the Dutch angle. Now, the Dutch angle married with this pose, I don't think that's a right match. This pose is very strong. So I think with respect to the composition, a more straight on shot would have served this image a little bit better as opposed to putting a Dutch angle on it. Um, I don't think it adds that much to it. However, if you wanted to add a little bit more drama to the shot and retain the Dutch angle, my suggestion would have been, instead of her looking at the camera, maybe looking off to where the light is coming from, and I think that would have added a little bit more drama to the shot. But I think a more straight on shot with respect to the composition would have served you better with this image, in my opinion. Okay, hope that was helpful. So next on deck, we have image number two. So this image was submitted by this gentleman. Thank you very much for submitting. Um, I cannot pronounce your name, so I'm just gonna call you the image creator from this point forward. I know it, I know, I know, uh, yeah, I have that problem. So let's get straight into this image. So let's start with the first thing, which is lighting. So when he submitted this image, he did submit some information about the lighting situation in this image. So with respect to the lighting in this image, what he used was window light. Now, the window light I'm guessing was probably low in comparison to our subject's height. The reason I say it's kind of low is because the light seems to be concentrated heavily at the lower portion of the subject's dress. So that's the first thing I noticed. That's where my eyes go, the first thing um, I notice when I'm looking at this image. So when I'm working with window light, the first thing I tend to do is I have my subject, especially with brides, right? Because you wanna see the details on the dress, right? So one of the things you would do is you have the subject turn their body away from the light source, which in this case is that window light. So you would have her turn her body away from that light source, which will put the dress a little bit in shadow and that will put her back to the light. Then you would ask her to turn her head back into the light. So at least you will have light on her face and then you'll be shooting her on the shadow side of the face. So that's what I would suggest with this shot because when I'm looking at it, my eyes go straight to that region of the dress where it's so heavily lit. Uh, so that would be my suggestion there with respect to the light. Another thing that I noticed with respect to this image is that it seems to be a little bit overexposed overall. The reason I say that is because if you look at the overall exposure on the subject and her dress, and all the white parts of this image, it just seems to be a little bit overexposed. My suggestion here is two things. Either when you're on location and you're doing a photo such as this one, and you take a shot, and you take a look at your back of your camera, if you notice that it's a little bit overexposed, just drop, drop your exposure maybe by one stop. Or to be on the safe side, if you think that you're not really sure, shoot it one stop over, one stop down. And then when you go back in post, you have that option. Also, I don't use this much, but another thing that you could use is the histogram. The histogram could help you indicate to you that, hey, 
listen, you're overexposed. Or one of the things that I use when I shoot, I don't necessarily use the histogram, but if you do use a histogram, you know, use that. But one of the things that I do use in my camera is the highlight indicator, also known as the blinkies, right? So what that does is tell you which part of the image is overexposed and it will blink at you and tell you, hey, this part of the image is overexposed. Now, if you expect that part of the image to be overexposed, then the blinkies is perfectly fine. The one thing I would say to you, if you're gonna show the image to your client, my suggestion would be, if you're gonna use the highlight indicator, which is AKA the blinkies, turn it off before you show it to your, to your clients because they don't know what the highlight indicator is. So when they see it blinking, it's just gonna be distracting to them. You know what it is. So you know what you're looking for. So if it's a little bit, if it's blinking at them, it's gonna be distracting. So just take it off before you show them uh, the image. So that would be my one suggestion there. When you're on location shooting the subject. The other thing I would suggest is reduce the exposure a little bit in post. So one other thing I wanna say with respect to the lighting, if you look at the subject's face, the lighting doesn't seem to be that great on the subject's face. The one suggestion I have here is to just have the subject turn her face just slightly towards the light so that the light could be a little bit more even on her face and you will still have that shadow detail on the left side of her face. So that will be my only suggestion there with respect to the lighting. So now let's move on to posing. So with respect to posing in this image, which actually is quite similar to the previous image that we reviewed. And let's use that as reference, right? The only difference between this image and the previous image that we reviewed is that her hand position, her hands, instead of it being on her hip, it's in front of her, okay? Which basically makes the pose a little bit more elegant and softer, right? As opposed to it being a little bit stronger in the previous image. That being said, what would also help this image is a little bit of shape or a little bit of S curve with this subject. And what I mean by that is if she would bend her right or left knee similar to like the previous image, that would have add just a little bit of shape to this subject. And I think that would have made this shot a little bit more elegant. Now let's move on to the composition. With respect to the composition, I don't see a whole lot wrong with the composition. So awesome job there. But if I could have changed one thing with the composition, and that would be the fireplace that's not really offering much to the shot. And those candles to the top left of the frame is also not adding much to the shot. So if I could, I would have changed my composition to eliminate those two items because it's not offering much to the shot. But you know, that's small potatoes. Overall, the composition is fine. So great job with that. So now let's get on to the rating of these two images. Lighting. From a lighting perspective, I gave this image a five. Pose. From a posing perspective, I gave this image a four. Composition. From a compositional perspective, I gave this image a three. Overall, this image received a rating of four out of five. Moving on to image number two. Light. From a lighting perspective, I gave this image a two. Pose. Pose and I gave this image a three. Composition. From a compositional perspective, I gave this image a four. Overall, this image received a rating of three out of five. I want to thank the image creators for submitting your images. Thank you very much. It means a great deal to me that you guys want my feedback. So I sincerely appreciate that. I hope you guys got a lot of information from this critique. 
and I hope the viewers got a lot of information as well from this critique. If you guys have any feedback that you would like to put about these images, helpful feedback, please drop those feedback down below and let me know what you think. It will be helpful to me, it will be helpful to the image creators, and it will be helpful to the community. However, if you're gonna put a feedback down below, please make sure that is very, very helpful. Not that, hey, this is bad, or hey, this is good. Say, what about this, and then give specific feedback on how to fix it because that's how you help others by giving them specific ideas of how it could have been fixed. So that's it guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I sincerely appreciate your time. I know it's very valuable, thank you. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button. Please put some feedback down below, let me know what you think. Please share this video with your friends and family. And hey guys, if you got this far in the video, you must like it. So come on, hit that subscribe button. Come on, hit the subscribe button. I won't tell anyone. It's gonna be between me and you. Yeah, just, just between me and you. <laughs> All right guys, I will see you guys next Monday.